There you go. Straighten this out. Keep the wings level. That's it. Okay. Good. Keep the nose up a little more now. Ah. Oh, come on. Keep that. Sorry. I'm here, my controls. Wait, sorry. My controls. That's not you. That's not you. Hey everybody, welcome back. First of all, I'm just going to preface this by saying that if you came here hoping to see a dramatic engine failure and landing in a field, well, thankfully that isn't going to be the case in this video. If you've been watching the channel or listening to my podcast, you should know I'm a huge stickler on pre-takeoff and abort plan briefings. I always try my best to instill the idea into my students that it's not if we have an engine failure, but when. These briefings should never be taken lightly and they should never be pre-packaged in such a way that doesn't even apply to the situation you're in or to the pilot behind the controls. Every briefing needs to be specific to the conditions, the location, the aircraft, and the pilot so that you have a clear picture of exactly what you're going to do when that engine failure occurs. It's this type of training and preconditioning that allows for the type of response you will see in this video. On this day, I was with my longtime friend Sammy, who you may remember from a previous video, and on this flight we were going to be heading out to the practice area to go over basic flight maneuvers. As always, we did our departure and abort plan briefings, and we took to the runway for takeoff. I'm going to let the video play through first, then we'll talk about what happened. Okay, and then we're going to get on that center line. Okay, and then put your toes to the bottoms of the pedals. All right, give it full power. Right rudder, hold that right rudder, good. Nice job, okay, airspeed's alive. Everything's in the green, looking good. Hold that center line, there we go. All right, looking for 60. There, 60, rotate, right there, hold it right there, hold it. Nose down a little, nose down, nose down, nose down, nose down. Right there, there's our port point continuing, you're going off to the right, so turn us back to the left, nose down, nose down, nose down. Yep, there you go. Straighten us out. Keep the wings level. That's it. Okay. Good. Keep the nose up a little more now. Ah. Nope. Come on. Keep that. Sorry. I'm here. My controls. Wait. Right. Sorry. My controls. That's not you. That's not you. So traffic six six five eight nine R has a partial engine uh, lack of power here. We're bringing it back around to land on zero two twenty. Something's going on. We're just going to bring it right back around. No, traffic 66589 is on the left downwind. Low, left downwind, 02, landing 02, Trump. Yeah, we're at full power right now. All right, we got that. That's giving us some more power. And. We're only getting 23 or so hundred RPM. All right. See if we can get another plane quickly. Try to make the most of this time. So, like me, I'm sure you're all wondering what happened. Unfortunately, I never got a firm diagnosis on the problem, but I can tell you it was something to do with the carburetor and it wasn't carb ice. This problem had presented itself previously to other pilots in various fashions, and each time no diagnosis or reproduction could be made to address it. However, after this, the plane was taken off the line and ultimately got a new engine. So let's take a closer look at what happened and the actions I took, both visibly and not visibly, to address it. As you saw, the takeoff roll was normal and the engine was making good power. 
Nothing in the run-up indicated any type of problem. As I'm giving Sammy basic verbal attitude adjustments, it was not long before there was a noticeable decrease in engine power. This isn't uncommon, as usually it's the student either taking their hand off the throttle and it's slipping back, or them unconsciously pulling the throttle out a bit. This is why you see my immediate reaction as being to push her hand back in along with the throttle. Immediately, I realized the throttle was already in all the way, so I reach over for the mixture to make sure that was in. Upon finding that in the proper position, I now know this is an abnormal situation. We need to come back to land immediately. So traffic 66589er has a partial engine, uh, lack of power here. We're bringing it back around to land on 0220. Notice how I'm maneuvering the plane at this time. This is not simply a left turn which happens to be in the direction of the traffic pattern to bring the plane back to the runway. If we go back to our abort plan briefings that we do at Twin Oaks, we always talk about the fact that if we lose an engine immediately after takeoff, we are going to go to the left of the tall trees and set it down in the fields just across the street. Not knowing how the engine was going to continue to respond, I was ready to do just that at this moment, and was pointing the plane in that direction. As I realized the engine was still stable and producing moderate power, I continued to make my way around the pattern. Keep in mind that as I was doing this, I was expecting the engine to completely fail at any given moment and was constantly moving my eyes from one field to the next to know where I was going to put her down if she did quit. I was always focused on my airspeed, I held VY the whole time and knew that if she wasn't going to maintain altitude at that speed, I was going to set her down in one of those fields. I did do some troubleshooting as we made our way around turning carb heat on and playing with small mixture changes to see if I could squeeze out any small amount of additional RPM. The carb heat made a small difference, but not an appreciable one. You can see here that I'm holding my VY speed of 78 and just barely able to hold altitude, sometimes getting a minor climb. Ultimately, I was able to hobble the plane around the pattern at 300 AGL and make a non-eventful landing back on the runway. We even were able to grab another plane and salvage the last half of our lesson time. While this particular event ended up being only a minor inconvenience, it was an important reminder of how critical having a clear pre-takeoff briefing and abort plan is. Not only do you need to brief the plan, but you need to always be expecting the worst to happen. A briefing will never do any good if you are caught by surprise in the moment and not expecting anything to go wrong. I want to thank all of you for watching and I hope this serves to help you all really dial in your pre-takeoff and abort plan briefings going forward. And with any luck, you'll never have to act on them, but will always be ready to do so. Until next time, resume your own navigation.